the truth of Diablo 4 after level 82. How I actually feel. Let's talk about how I honestly feel in Diablo 4. I've gotten to level 82. I have basically completed my renown at this point. I have got all the altars of Lilith. Uh, obviously Ooh. beat the campaign Ooh. and all of them in World Tier 4. My That's gear is me. looking pretty stout. I don't really know what left I could really farm at this point other than experience and do the pinnacle boss and, you know, like a few other uh, uh, things at the moment. A farm, God knows, too many legendaries. Done a bunch of PvP. You can see I got some ears in here too. I've been doing PvP. I've been playing with friends. I've also been playing solo. So I've had a pretty good amount of experience uh, and this is coming from a druid's perspective. Now, I have seen a, a lot of feedback related to this game, both extremely positive as well as extremely negative. <laughs> and I have yet to find too much of good nuanced conversation about around the good and the bad around this game. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do my very best to ride that line fairly. So let's talk about the good first and what I like about the game. I think the game people say is overwhelmingly complicated, but I actually think it's fairly decently simple. I think the skill tree isn't too confusing. It looks very confusing at the beginning, but legitimately all of these are linear. So this I don't think it's I don't think the skill tree is complex enough. Personally, I, I wish that there was another fork for each of these different spells. Like maybe maybe I'm asking for too much. Maybe it's too complex at that point. But like personally, I'd like to see a little bit more. It's my opinion. This isn't something where you really have to worry I'm about saying matching things Just a too little much. Bit I think more. the Paragon board looks very confusing until you still or until you actually try using it. So you and then it you realize, actual... it, yes, it's still a little bit confusing, but it's not really as bad as it seems. If you can under yeah. understand 90 degree angles and turning things, you can basically understand a Paragon board once you actually get your hands sure. on it. Just looking at it, it looks very confusing. The way items work, the way legendaries work, the way uniques work, the way you acquire these all seem decently well mm -hmm. explained. Though, and I will say there are some things, for instance, like aspects having different tiers, for instance, the uh, ancestral and the sacred being different colors and literally named different offensive aspect of the raging. This is an ancestral legendary, but this one is a sacred legendary and having- Ancestral is tier four, I believe, and sacred is tier three. Absolute, basically uh, no difference in terms of what these items actually do, I think can also be extremely confusing as yeah, well. For instance, I have very often no seen people say things like ancestral legendary aspects are better than normal. See how this one goes one to five seconds and mm -hmm. is a maximum row of five seconds. But then this is a normal legendary ring that goes one to five seconds as well. It just says three there. And the reason people don't even realize it goes all the way to five seconds is because they, they have, have it their on. tool tips yeah. off. So, and this is by default. So they have their advanced tool tips off by default. Shout out to Woody Joe actually for informing me about this because I didn't know this originally. And then they see it says three seconds here as well. And they think that one's lower yeah, than- it's just casual players don't know shit about the game, right? Like, I, I feel like if you, it would be nice if you could hold down alt or control whenever you mouse over something and alt or control would enable the advanced tooltips for that item. My aspect that's five. So ancestor was higher. And so there's a lot of misinformation and confusion coming from a large amounts of uh, players in the game and that can get spread. So I do think there are some things that are fairly poorly explained in the game. Yes. However, once you understand the fundamentals of the mechanic, it becomes significantly more enjoyable. Also uh, being crowd controlled. I don't think it's adequately explained what being crowd controlled means. I think that if you asked a hundred people, what does being crowd controlled mean? You would not get a hundred of the same answer. Or would you count like, let's say a 10% slow or a taunt as crowd control, or would you count a stun as crowd control? Right? You see kind of what I'm saying? Because like in a, in Diablo four, any type of crowd control is is the same thing so like a lot of barbarians for example go with hamstring hamstring makes bleeds uh slow you and guess what now you just take advantage of a hundred percent crowd control uptime both you have soft cc and on hard cc yeah but i think if you ask somebody like would you consider like would would they consciously acknowledge that like a 10 percent slow would count as cc i bet a lot of people wouldn't think that I do think there is something to be said for the world's size. I feel like the actual size of the world, the fact that these, these Legion events, which by the way, you can farm free horse cosmetic from here that's like a wow. ghost horse, really cool. 
I think that the actual size of the map is significant when I'm teleporting around the different areas. I do feel the variety in terms of what the landscape looks like. Mm -hmm. I do think it is fair to say that what a lot of people, I have the feedback I have read, is that people were surprised that so many of the minions look alike. This is true, it is a Diablo game, hell is running over, and a lot of the demons are twins, apparently. So I do believe that- This is, I mean, this is how it was in Diablo 4 or Diablo 3. Uh, I didn't play all the way all the way through Diablo 2, I'm not sure. Most games have, I mean, like Elden Ring has, has rerun characters. I mean, it is what it is. Something to be said for that. I don't know how you fix that within the ARPG hack and slash genre, to be fair, but I do understand that criticism and I accept that. <laughs> now, in terms of the early, mid, and late game, I would like to get into that feedback okay. as well. I think the early game is the most exciting. You're pushing through the story. What you're trying to do is fairly well explained. You're trying- I'll also reiterate, the early game experience for barbarians and druids is bad. I think it is infinitely less fun than a sorcerer or a rogue. They are worse for no reason. It doesn't need to be that way. Just change the modifiers on the spells. Problem solved to do the yellow stories they are very easily marked there is good is story stupid. dialogue there is very good voice acting yes this is blizzard after all so there's also very good cut scenes me personally i found some of the boss fights to be w way better than some of the other boss fights i'll put it that way in order to keep the spoilers free however i have heard mixed reviews on the boss fights so i will take that one under advisement as this is just my own personal opinion I think it is not clear upon meeting. I think it's kind of fair. Like, I'm just going to leak this uh, if you don't want a spoiler uh, too bad. Uh, Ashava, the world boss, is like one of the last bosses in the campaign. That wasn't super cool. That was dumb. Finally, playing the game, what to do after the campaign. And I actually believe this is a good thing. I think the fact that it does not immediately tell you go and farm nightmare dungeons, go and max your renown, but instead you get the sense of the world has opened up to you. I actually enjoy that a good deal. Yeah. I am an old school RuneScape player. I've played RuneScape since 2001 when it came out from Devious Mud. Oh. I'm actually older than I look, to be honest with you guys. So for that reason, I very much enjoy open world. I do not like hand holding. I like games that give me a character and I feel like I am brutally trying to survive within the elements around me and figure out what's going on in the game. So I like that. The only thing I don't like is terrible trashy UIs and bad quality of life. I would say the UIs could be improved. I'm not calling them trashy. I'm saying those are things I don't like. There is what do I have to say? The thing that everybody else is saying, where the fuck is the gem tab blizzard? Come on. Like, what is this? What just like, what, what do we need? Like we need a, a tab for consumables, but we don't have a tab for gems. Oh my God. It's just such a waste of space. It sucks. Just give us a gem tab. It should have happened in uh and no, I don't want it to be a DLC. Cause then I owe that guy $500. Remember I bet against that. No, just put it in the game. Just say, hey guys, we hear you. You want gem tabs? All right, we're going to do it. There's aspects of that I don't like. I would say right now, having one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven gem slots yeah. all slotted up with gems is extremely annoying. Having no it's gem bag stupid. is extremely annoying. Yeah. And having inventory space, uh, you guys saw already my, uh, let me walk over here and show you. You guys already saw my storage stash. And having a storage stash that is completely full with legendaries is very annoying. You might think, okay, this sounds I like wish we had more storage room. Like suffering some success. Oh, damn, you got so many legendaries. You know, fuck you. But that's not what I'm saying. I cannot not pick these up if I want to. These are forced to be picked up to me. Unfortunately, I'm going to turn the alerts off so I don't keep spamming. Uh, unfortunately here, uh, these are forced for me to uh, acquire. The reason is, is if a legendary drops in the field and I do not want that legendary and I leave the dungeon, when I go to my stash, that legendary shows up right here. And it gives me two options. I can either put in my inventory or I can put in the stash. Does not give me an auto salvage ability. Does not give me anything like that. Also, the stash has no way for me to filter or search through, basically forcing me to go and hit the sort button in order to make them sort by type and then look through all the chest plates, etc., until I find one I want. So very often- That's true. It would be nice if we had a search function. Yeah. It would just, it would just make the game better. That's it. 
often what I find myself doing is not wanting to look through 3,000 different items to find min-max rows from these mm -hmm. tiny little texts and my eyes are bur blurring from playing the game 24 hours a day literally anyway. So instead, I'm just crunching everything and not giving a fuck. So I think that that is probably some poor gameplay design in terms of the stash and the UI with these items. Now, that is going to be probably my primary negative feedback. There is one other point I would like to make, which is the dungeons. There are a lot of them. You are not required to clear all of them, but there are plenty of codexes here I have already done, as you can see, and there are plenty more still left. I find the dungeon system to be totally fine and completely okay. However, if Blizzard asks me to refarm all of these things, I will probably do it once for season one, and afterwards I will probably never play Diablo 4 again. Because if I have to refarm 115 different dungeons and farm out that much renown, that's not fun. There were many leagues in PoE that I just didn't play the league because I thought about all of the different, like, oh, so then I have to get the Conqueror Stones, and then there's the Watch Stones, and then I have to level up the Watch Stones, and then I have to kill the Conquerors in a different level, and then do the maps, and I, you know, I'm just, ah, oh, fuck, well, I'm just going to play WoW. You know, like, it's just not a good time. Conquerors are shit, yeah. I do like the variety of having the legendary aspects at a minimum row. I think that's smart. So there is still a way and a reason to farm normal legendaries yes, and not I just use codex this. for everything. But this smart. also makes certain builds more viable early and allows certain types of players to be able to build certain types of classes earlier than otherwise would have been possible mm -hmm. with just pure RNG of getting the legendary items. This is almost like sort of being able to craft legendaries or set items from Diablo 3. This is the way of guaranteeing certain items. I think yeah. this was probably a necessity to keep players encouraged because of the difficulty of the game. Now, speaking of the difficulty of the game, I've seen mixed opinions. I've seen people speaking that the game plays very slow, that the game plays very hard, it is very brutal, and I enjoy that is what people will say. Then I will see people that say this is way too easy. I'm blasting through everything. I got to in game in two days, and I don't understand what I'm supposed to do now. So my That's where I'm at. I'm going to be honest, I one-shot Lilith. I didn't even die. Uh, I died once on the Capstone Dungeon, uh, and this is on Tier 2, uh, because I didn't know the, where he would teleport on top of me and then do, like, the three-prong attack. I didn't think he was going to do it twice. It killed me once, and that was it. Uh, then I went back, I killed it. It was easy. I didn't even try to get my gear... Uh, I didn't upgrade anything. I just went in raw, and that was it. And this is on World Tier 2 as Barbarian, as Whirlwind build. I don't really think it was that hard. Uh, all of the Nightmare Dungeons I've done after that have been pretty easy, too. I, I don't struggle at all. I think the difficulty is fine, though. Because I played Barbarian in, uh, I played, I mean, I, I didn't play Barbarian. I played like a fucking it was like Chieftain and shit like that in PoE before. Uh, Shadow, Slayer, right? I played Barbarian in Diablo 3. Uh, like, I, I, I played uh, Berserker in Lost Ark. Like, I understand the game better than an average player does in terms of, like, movement and avoidance and stuff like that. Do with a non-meta build? Bro, like, uh, like, oh. Whirlwind is not a leveling meta build, especially not for bosses. Yeah, it, it's it's not. It's not that great. My addressing to these points is really I have multiple points to this, but I'm going to start with mm -hmm. the most obvious, which is that players like me who are playing 24 hours a day in order to actually either make content creation on this or learn the entire game before the casual yeah, player in order to fine. explain things to the casual player for the sake of media like YouTube views yeah. and Twitch growth, etc., we are not the standard players and nope. should not be balanced around. The exactly. game should be balanced True. around True. the casual dad True. who comes home after a long day of work. He has kids Diablo that are yelling. Dance. He wants to sit down with his one beer a day and play for two hours. I think that that is the target audience because mm -hmm. this is now Diablo. The majority of the people playing this are in 30 to 45 age bracket. They're old school gamers that enjoy the game very much and they do not have... 24 hours a day to play this game. Yes. So I do believe that while I agree, it is possible for people like me to get to the point of now all I'm doing is essentially grinding the same thing over and over again very quickly. I do not believe that should be in the conversation in terms of overall complete balance. 
I think. And I think that goes even farther to explain my point that I think it's very problematic that players might have to refarm Renown or these time sink side activities during the seasons. That is such a massive barrier to entry that I don't think I'll play any Diablo seasons after the first one if I have to do that more than twice. Very often, the casual average game player, because I know there's hardcore community in yeah. these games, I understand, I myself am one. Again, I play RuneScape, takes the most hours out of any game the max, okay? That's just true. I understand that there is audience for these things, but the vast majority of players are not the 1%, That's like right. maybe you, the viewer, who is a a very good long-term PC hardcore gamer, yeah. that is a small percentage of the players, and the most players are probably never even going to hit level 82. I don't think the majority of players are going well, to... I, I think, I, I think like, the casual slash hardcore players will, but the casual players, the majority players, probably will not farm all 180 or something altars yeah, of Lilith nuts. that I farmed in order just to get the plus two strength on each ooh, you know type of ooh, one of these. I don't ooh. see that happening, nor do I see the average player going into the Paragon board and spending 15 hours of their day while they drink their one beer to be able to figure this out. I do think what we will see is a vast majority of those casual players looking up a couple guides, yep. a couple yep. of tips and tricks. I myself have seen those Let's search terms coming through. I know you guys are looking for them, figuring out the game on that level and then playing through a pre-planned build. I think that's going to be a lot of players. However, in my personal mind, this would be a mistake. And the reason I say this is this game is actually, I think very well suited for that ca casual type of player. I think the world tiers seeing that there's only four of them, meaning every time you go from a world tier, it feels like a significant accomplishment. When you start in world tier one... Yeah, and you... I definitely agree with this. Having like 75 different variations of difficulty is crazy. I'd be okay if they added a fifth one, if they stopped scaling at 80. But like, yeah, I, I don't want to see like Torment 75. Greater Rift level 131? Oh my God. You bump up to world tier two if you're not, and again, if you're min maxing, you should start in world tier one as it is going to be faster and you will blast through it faster so you can get to tier three faster and you skip to its entirety. Yeah. But if you are the average user, you will start in maybe one, mm -hmm. think this is too easy, to or maybe two. you just don't want to blast through things, you go to two, and then each and every minion is going to feel like its own challenge, and that might actually be something that you enjoy personally. Sure. I also think that the discoverability of this game is insane. I think when you walk around the world and you discover these different dungeons, the different player players that you'll see, the different events that will happen, you'll notice the codexes that will have rewards in them. I think it would be cool if you could loot an item that would help you find the altars of Lilith without having to look them up. Like, for example, you know, like in WoW, how you can find, you can go around and if you're near a dragon riding rune, it will like, your dragon will be like, <laughs> and then it'll say, your dragon source, your dragon senses a dragon can rune or a, a dragon riding rune. And I, I think that the horse should be like, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay, there's one over, you know, and it's like it, it, uh, you know, there's like a, a faint light that goes in a certain direction. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Because, like, I just feel like the gameplay, it feels bad going through the game and knowing that these things are out there. But knowing also that it would be stupid to try to get every single one while you're leveling up. It just creates, like, a weird, it's like a weird thing where, like, if you were able to just, like, notice that they were there or have some sort of like an indication of that, I just feel like the gameplay for that would be way better. Um, even quests that are sort of hidden, like for instance, I have some areas I've even well, uncovered yet and I've been again. playing yeah. the whole time. I think that is a fantastic addition to a Diablo game. I have played Diablo 3 significantly and in my time playing Diablo 3, I felt like every single map was basically a linear path. It is me walking down a sidewalk to get somewhere. Yes. Whereas in this, I actually do feel like I'm on a map, I'm on a a landmass, I'm on a area. A I would state, agree with this. Whatever you want to call it, I'm I'm in a world. Yes. Is what it actually feels like. That is a step up in terms of environment, which I think is heavily important for the average player.
I yes. think that's heavily important to feel like you're within an actual world. I think this is doubled down by the fact that when you're walking around on the map, you'll also very much experience unique type of monsters. So they'll have like a star that will show up and have a unique monster. And also the side quests, which are crucially important, by the way, for min maxers for renown, you'll want to do these blue quests. Don't sleep on them. It's a mistake I made. I also believe that these side quests do a good job at getting you to areas that you don't normally go. Like you yeah, this is good. All, all of what he's saying, this is definitely so true. So true and so real. Uh, I think having the side quests and getting people out into the world is like super important. And like the environment of the world is cool. I personally wish that there was more of like, you know, like Act 3, the hell area, whenever you're going down to Asmodan. I wish that we had more of that in Diablo 4. Because I feel like the only real vibe that I get from that is at the end of the campaign. Yeah, a little bit more hell. Maybe we'll get that in an expansion. I'm assuming that we will. But personally, yeah. Tell me what's right here other than Altar of Lilith that's down there. It's good There's enough. nothing yeah, it's, here. It's, it's so in order to get you there, enough. they got a side quest to get you there to experience very that. I also think the fact that after you beat the campaign, you can make a new character, skip the campaign, and start in multiple different regions yeah. is actually a very great quality of life for people that play through the game big the campaign and then just want to try a new class because they're not trying to go to level 100 and min max one class mm -hmm. level 100 takes a very long time the experience leveling in this game is very different than some of the previous games and so for that reason i think this was also a good addition i also want to mention that i'm seeing a lot of people get very angry about balance changes i myself did sort of a half-hearted meme video on the druid balance changes i was kind of uh i mean like the truth is that i don't like like obviously whirlwind barbarian needed to be nerfed as many times as it was and i still think whirlwind barbarian is good i'm still playing it I just don't like the play. I, I don't like the play style that the nerfs require you to go behind. I don't like the idea of like a feast and famine gameplay where like half of the time your character sucks and you have to use these really shitty builder spells in order to do the fun spells. Like, I, I don't like that. I, I wish you, why can't we just be going, why can't we just go big dick all the time? Especially at endgame. Yeah, I just, I don't like the rotation. I don't like the forced builder spender system in like pretty much all, all the classes except for um uh, what's it called uh the sorcerer or whatever the fuck it's called in this game uh that's it because big dick becomes the norm big dick doesn't exist anymore i, I disagree uh like for example in lost ark every single one of my abilities except for um you know my interrupt ability is a big dick ability you know hellblade big dick finishing strike big dick sword storm big dick Everything is big dick, and it feels good the entire time. It never stops feeling good. Also, look at um, look at PoE. What's the only spell I'm casting if I'm playing a uh, cyclone? Cyclone. I don't have to build up a, something to use cyclone. Maybe if you're using vol, well, I'm not going to use vol cyclone. But if you're using a vol spell, maybe that's it. But other than that, no. Kind of joking around, but at the most part, I thought Druid legitimately. Uh, I was surprised with the nerfs. Even people like me who are complaining about nerfs to classes for the in game, my opinion, while it may matter, does not matter as much as balancing the game around the average user and what they yeah. experience. And I think that that average user, the changes were probably for the best. I yeah, think I don't like obviously the barbarian nerfs sucked, but like guys, barbarian was busted. Like it was so, it was. It was like, this was Barbarian, and these were the other four classes. It wasn't even remotely close. It could literally crit for billions of damage. It still is? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, is they nerfed it 50 times. It's still one of the best classes. Gores was just too much? Yeah, it was disgusting. So, like, I understand why they nerfed it. I just don't like the play style that the nerfs make you do. And this is something I said right from the beta, is I don't like the builder spender system that like every class basically has except for sorcerer. I just think it sucks. It feels bad to have to use your builder spells. And I don't think that you should have to feel bad while playing the game. And I think that Lost Ark proves that you can have a array of really fun spells 
and you don't have to have bad spells to make the good spells feel better. Trying to make sure that some classes are are not so complete outliers that yeah. every single person feels like if you don't play this class, you're just stupid. Exactly. I hate it in or games when I join a game yeah. and everyone's like, you're playing that class? What a loser. I hate that personally. I think I really enjoy uh, being able to feel like I identify with my character, which this game does very well. When I'm playing Druid, I wanted to play Druid because I wanted to shapeshift. I wanted to be a bear, He's mostly. A furry. That was like 90% okay. of my reason. I also wanted to be a wolf. That was the other 10%. I got furry. what I wanted. It happens to be the class is actually quite good. And that both of those builds, by the way, Stormwolf actually seems like it has some, I have all of the uniques now for the Druid. I will do a video on this, but Stormwolf seems like it has something coming. I have some footage of this. So in my own opinion, where I'm going with this, and you're probably seeing me mention quite often mm -hmm. is, this game is probably a seven out of 10 for min maxers, maybe a six out of 10. For people that want to grind through, blast 100 and all. It's actually very good insight. I, I kind of agree with them. I feel like the stats in Diablo 4 are boring. Close enemies do 6% less damage to you? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? You have close damage, vulnerable damage, CC damage, crowd control damage, CC, uh, uh, stunned damage, injured damage healthy damage like it's just all the same thing but with a different uh a, a different trigger i just i i find it so boring like and this is what was so good about diablo 3 whenever it came out is that you had like okay you get more attack speed oh, now you can crit more you get more crit damage now your crits are doing more damage then you get a higher crit chance and now your faster attacks are critting more, and they're doing even more! And it's just, you're doing so much fucking damage! It felt amazing! It was so good! What happened? You know, like, what is this? And, and like, you could feel that gameplay. Like, I remember I would watch somebody play with, like, a fully decked out demon hunter. I remember I'd watch these guys. That's why I would watch, that's why I first started watching Twitch. I watched it for Wreckful playing uh, Warrior in Mr. Pandaria, and then I watched it because it's like, how the fuck does this dude like kill Inferno Diablo in one second? The the boss doesn't even get to him; it's dead. And like you see his damage, and it's just like he just fucking busts a nut on the screen of like twenty thousand crits, and Diablo's in phase three. It was fucking insane. And it it like the gameplay of it felt too many too like so much different and i feel like the gameplay like poe obviously does this incredibly well too but like what i'm what i'm saying with diablo 3 right of attack speed critical strike damage main stat critical strike chance right you have four multipliers you can feel it you can feel it feel better and it's the same thing in wow like how many of you guys one of your favorite patches in wow was either ice crown citadel Siege of Orgrimmar 5.4 or The End of Legion? One of those three. How many of you guys was, this was one of your favorite patches? Yep. Yep, there it is. You know why? Because you had a lot of attack speed. You had a lot of critical strike chance. And on some of those, you had a lot of critical strike damage. And you had a lot of haste. You had a lot of armor pin. And you have a lot of armor pin, and you have more attack, attack speed, so your armor penetration is happening more often. <laughs> BFA corruption, yeah. That's what's fun. And that's what I'm trying to get at. And I, I think that the Diablo 4, I, I'll log on the game after this, and I'll show you guys kind of what I mean. But, uh, yeah. Well, that... I find those people, the conversations I'm having with those players are getting bored quicker than they expected. However, for the average gamer, the 30 to 45 year old dad who has a couple hours a day, I'm finding them enjoying the game even more than they expected. So there is a yin yang balance. I think they sacrifice some of the focus on this hardcore community in order to engage a little bit more of the average old school gamer who maybe doesn't have as much ability to be that hardcore gamer that they exactly. fell in love with gaming in the beginning.
I think this is a fine sacrifice because while you might think that focusing on the hardcore community that's just doubling down, playing the games all the time, is their core fan base no. and they should appeal to these people. No, because these people are cucks. They're going to play the game no matter what. The reality is the core fan base is that dad who no longer has the ability yep. or that mom. OK, I'm not trying to do a gender thing that doesn't have that ability anymore. Sure there's dozens to play of the games play that they love and they desire because life happened. And I think Diablo 4 does actually a pretty good job at reestablishing this type of game into immediately being enjoyable for those types of players. So they might feel left behind in terms of levels, but they don't feel left behind in terms of Gameplay. loving the game. Yeah. That's what I have found personally from talking to players. It's what I have experienced with my own gameplay. Really and true. it stands true, I, the I reason like for me. I did find the end game come sooner than I imagined. However, I found myself getting the end game to be more enjoyable than I thought. And I have since upgraded my rating from- The campaign for a Diablo 4 is a 10. And I think that at the lowest, it's a nine. Seven it's, out of it's a better campaign than Lost Ark. It's a better campaign than Path of Exile. I haven't played Last Epoch. I can't speak to that. 10 for myself personally. This has nothing to do with the previous ratings I just mentioned. But for myself, on the betas, I rated a seven out of 10. I thought that was very fair. I've since upgraded to an eight out of 10. I will say I have one other harsh criticism other than the filtering and stash issues with the items and the no search feature issues and the gym bag issues. There's one other thing, which is that dungeons were supposed to be fixed. They're not supposed to be kind of backtracking. I feel like I like putting it. If you have a line where you have to go this way, then back then this way. But you take that line, you make it a circle where you have to go around. It's still the same distance. And that's effectively what happens. So yeah. I feel like I am still running the same amount of distance as I expected to with backtracking. I also find that the dungeons themselves do lack a little bit of variety, but they put a billion goddamn dungeons in this game. So they repeat some of the bosses. Yeah, I think there's about, there's 120 dungeons, but really there's about 12. Those are really my only complaints. Other than that, I think this game, if you're the person who loved gaming growing Maybe up 10. and has since lost the ability to play games 12 hours a day like people like me that have no life other than video gaming yeah. i think this game was designed for you yes that's what i think you know i think there's it a lot of absolutely. conversation around the other side of the community the hardcore the niche yep. the, the small group true you know i'm in that group but i don't think it was designed for me i think this game was designed for you hi everyone it's rax diablo for fucking hoodie huh? Let's talk about how- Oh man, yeah, I totally agree with pretty much everything he's saying here. I, I wish he had talked a little bit more about the itemization. Uh, there's the video right there, guys. Um, obviously, I, I definitely I, I definitely like these videos. I, I feel like he's provided a lot of insight, etc., into uh, Diablo games. And uh, yeah, the math review is funny. Yeah, I might have to look in that and see for myself. Mr. Llama's Diablo 4 view and uh, how to fix it. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen that or not. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have given reviews, so I'm not sure really if I'm going to be able to watch every single one of them, but I'll watch more of them over time for sh definitely. Of course I will. Good video, good pace, very articulate. Yeah, I think this is a great video. Probably one of the best Diablo 4 reviews out there. So, uh, yeah. I, I just feel like they could make the itemization better. I think the itemization is super boring, and I don't feel different playing the game with itemization. I think the only time that I feel different is whenever I get a uh, different trait or something like that. Thoughts on mob density in Diablo 4? Like, so I, I do dungeons in Diablo 4, right? And I'll do a dungeon, and there will be like eight elites stacked on top of each other. And then I'll do another dungeon and there's like 10 elites in the whole thing. How to fix this? Have more areas where there's eight elites stacked on top of each other because it's fucking fun. And almost every time I do a pack like that, I get a legendary.